Hey ho, this is Dr. Tom the Frog, and you are watching me run my first game on Hangouts. I've, I've played a couple games, and this one I'm running, and it's only... But I blame the two players here. I blame them both. First, we have we have the wonderful Andrea. How are you doing, Andrea? Good. And really tired. I'm sorry. And next we have we have Yona. How are you doing, Yona? I'm good, and I'm all excited. Yay! Fantastic. Okay, we have decided, and by we, I mean me. I'm speaking the royal we, to run... The, the challenge was, because Andrea and Yona, if you've watched the episode, if you haven't, totally go back, because it was hilarious. They were very funny. But they challenged me, because they, in, in 2014, the two of them together ran, or, or, or played in over 150 new-to-them games. All RPGs. Yes, they are certifiable. And, and, they, and they challenged me to run a new game for them. Now... It took several weeks to find a game that they had never played because they've played most all of them. However, they have not combed the archives of the 17 Design Studios website. That's uh, John Harper's little joint. And he put out this really cool four-page game called Ghost Lines. And that's what we're going to be playing today. Now, Ghost Lines is a derivative, or it uses the Apocalypse Engine, which is one of my favorite games. As you can see, I'm playtester for Apocalypse Pond, and I know Jason Morningstar wanted me to run Apocalypse Pond, but it's not quite in a ready state, meaning that I'm scared to run it um, in public, but it's, 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 in, it's in process. Someday. Someday soon. Now, uh, Ghost Lines is uh, set in the same world as Blades in the Dark, which is a fantastic Thief Guild type game. Uh, inspired by books by like Lies of Loch Lamora or the game Dishonored, or also if you're a fan of the Vlad Taltos series. I, 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 my, my production assistant monkey is giving me all this script to say about Blaze. I haven't even played it, but he thinks it's the bee's knees, so there you go. Blaze in the Dark on Kickstarter. Enough enough promotion. Oh, Lord, I just I want a game. All right, we're going to be running a nice short game here. Uh, we're going to be running for a couple hours uh, the Ghost Lines game. So... Uh, both Andrea and Yona worked hard to create their characters ahead of time. So rather than you just watching my bobbing head talk over and over, I'm going to let them talk. So Andrea, tell us about your Ghost Lines character. What's she like? I'm playing Cass. Um, her badge is she's Aaron. Um, she is a spider. She's from the uh, area of Iruvia, which means she's very nimble and very swift, which are good spider traits. Um and she's kind of she's kind of spunky. Yeah, yeah, I love that picture you chose for her. She looks so spunky. <laughs> Good. Great. And next we have Yona. Tell us about your character. Um, I am playing Cecla Clermont, and she is an anchor, and she comes from Scotland, and she's very bold and tough. So she's more like you know the tank with her huge gun, which unfortunately didn't fit the avatar completely. Yeah, well, well, we'll have to link a picture that you found that on the interwebs, and it was pretty fantastic. I like that gun. Yes, me too. All right, so Ghost Lines. I'm going to read a little bit of text because that's, that's the thing that will hopefully get us all into the world. Plus, I like the sound of my own voice. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> uh, this is all in the, in, this is in the Ghost Lines PDF. I'm not making it up. Not yet. I haven't started making anything up yet. Okay, here we go. It is the year 891 of the Imperium that united the Shattered Isles of the Cataclysm under one rule. All glory to His Majesty the Immortal Emperor! You work the Ghost Lines, the Electro Railroad that passes through the ink-dark deadlands between cities. Spirits of the dead, free to roam the world since the gates of death were broken in the Cataclysm, often get entangled in the powerful electrical field generated by the trains. Line bowls, like you, walk the length of the cars, magnetized boots clanking and breather mask hissing, to clear the offending spirits with your lightning hooks before they do too much damage. Now, uh, there's, there's other stuff, but that's all we need to get started. Now, the two of you are part of a team, and you have two other line bowls that are part of your team now. As uh, you guys said during your intro, uh, Kes is a spider... And and Sethla is an anchor. The other two members of your your little line bull team is Timoth Brogan, 
who's the rook, and Cantor Haig, who is the owl. Uh, they will appear later um, when it is appropriate. So, we're going to start off with uh, the, the four of you walking along the top of the line. Now, currently, uh, and there's a super sweet picture of um, the... I, I put this in our little shared document, but uh, you should totally go and check that out on the 1-7. There's a great map, and right now, uh, this bull team, the lion bull, is on the line in Akros, and you're headed through what's called the pass. And the pass travels through the the it's the eastern mountain range, and it's it's a snow-capped mountain peaks that you're passing through. And uh, the the four of you have been traveling, and right now, uh, Cantor, <clears throat> uh, Cantor, and and uh, and Timoth are at the uh, they're at the aft or the the back of the train, and the pair of you, Kess and Sethla, uh, you're near the four, and uh, so you're you're near the steam engine, which is whistling and everything's bumbling and and trundling of the chunka 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 because it's you know it, it's a train, it's a steam train, uh, but it's electrified too, and uh, you're charging along through the pass, and at one point uh, you're passing actually through a tunnel. Uh, so there's cool echoes because that's awesome, and there's some like crazy sparky line electric light stuff, and then um, up ahead, the pair of you see uh, that there are there are two ghostly images that that drop in front of the tunnel, and they they land on top of the front of the train. Uh, now the two of you, I first I gotta know, Quest, Kess, uh, now how experienced are you? Like is you're you're a low level if I correct from the sheet you're zero level so I, is this your first time out? Yes, it is. Oh wow! Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit you right now. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Okay, I'm gonna hit you with one trauma just because you just saw you just you just you're gonna encounter a ghost. So I just want you to be scared. So yeah, one I'm trauma right now. Very scared. There, there are two tracks for harm in this game. Uh, there's the actual trauma, which is freaking out, and then there's harm, which is getting physically hurt. So right now you have one trauma, which doesn't necessarily hurt you too bad, but it's the foreshadowing of going crazy. Now, Sethla, you're the anchor, which means you're kind of the leader of this bull team. Um, but you're, again, you're a, a low level. Have you been around the block before? How, how many uh, how many lines have you worked? Lines meaning the, uh, you know, the routes between cities. Uh, well, I, I don't think I've been out before either. I'm zero level two. Oh, wow. This is great. I love it. So, yeah. <laughs> Guess what? That's, that's one trauma for you, too, there. <laughs> All right. Mark those sheets. Okay. So now you know... Those were definitely gusts, and they and they fell. They just like dropped and landed right on top of the the front of the train, which of course is where the conductor is, and that's probably not a good thing. What do you do? We gotta get that ghost down, right? Right. Sweet. Let's so go. The pair of you are walking along. You've got three cars to move across, and uh, I I think that let's let's see. I'm I'm gonna whoa, my my PDF just just minimized or closed or something. Hold on a second. I gotta get the rules up here. <laughs> mm -hmm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I think that I'd like to see you to employ finesse uh, to, to try to do this quickly and avoid any trouble because you're gonna have to move across the top of three cars to get to the, uh, the head of the engine and, and see what's going on here. Both of us? Uh-huh. And when you employ finesse, you roll finesse. Now, oh, oh, oh! If you want, since you're the anchor, you could you could lead it, and then and then Kes could assist if you want. Ah, uh, well, her finesse is two minus zero. So <laughs> I will I will help you. <laughs> yes, I I will probably just kind of be oh help me. Okay, so uh, Kes, you're you're following her up, um, and then no, you're leading no. the way, Sethla. Oh, you got a plus oh, one, oh, oh, oh. but it's a zero, which means oh. you got a six. Still not enough. It's a six. Yeah. I know. We fail. First day on a job, and we already fail. Oh, okay. So, so that's okay. All right. So the first day on the job, the two of you are running across, and here's what happens. So, Kess, you're doing really well, and uh, you're watching after Sethla, and, and what happens is Sethla jumps 
you know, it's, it's you know, you got the the cars they join together, and there's that gap space. She jumps across, and then her her magnetized boot gets stuck, and uh, it, it's like wedged in in a little frame in the in there. And now here's the thing: you could probably spend some time just working out the boot, but if you do. Who knows what's going to happen to the conductor? You could pull off the boot, but then you're kind of one-footed and it's super cold. What do you do? I will just leave the boot behind. Oh, oh you're so you know, frostbite, frostbite is something I can deal with later. There's more important things happening right now. Oh, Screw man. the boot. What What do you do about that, Cass? Because it looks like Seth is going crazy here. <laughs> <laughs> but she's doing it. She's doing it very confidently. You okay? Yes, I am. Let's worry about the boot later. Oh, sweet. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna say you just take like one little harm, and, the, and that that's fine. We just it's like for color that you, your your foot is cold, so you're kind of doing the plump 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 plump. So you gotta magnetize one foot and not the other. <laughs> and the two of you push on, because yeah, you're super brave. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, since you you were pretty finessey there, Kes, you realize that your two uh, lime bowls. They have no idea what's going on up here. Just, just so you know, dude, your two buddies mm. in the back of the train. So we should, oh. we should probably let them know. Are there, are there like radios in this world? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, so there, are, there, are, there are headsets, hissing headsets, and hmm, let me look at a picture of the cool looking. All right, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna share a picture. We'll we'll make a decision together here if we think that that's it. So we're taking a look at this, this super cool mask art here. I th- what do you think? You think that's got some some kind of communication devices inside there? Otherwise, it'd be kind of lame, wouldn't it? It's, it's, yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right. So we'll do that. Okay. okay. So I will uh, <clears throat> as as I'm nimbly. Racing across the top of the car, yell, uh, Broken, Hag, we've got ghosts up front. Oh, okay, great, great. Uh, so, so Broken says, uh, I'm on my way, and I'll bring Hag. And, and Hag's like, well, of course you're bringing me, because you're in front of me. Okay, so, the two of you, you come on top of the, uh, the, the front of the engine, you've got one of those cool big steam stack things, it's billowing out smoke, and there's a whistle... Because, you know, trains. And then uh, as you come in, you see that there's all kinds of spectral energy and electroplasm on the front of the train. It's as if these two ghosts just jumped in front of the train together. Uh, But now you don't see them on the outside, but there's this ghostly bluish light that's coming in from the inside, and you hear the conductor screaming. Uh, You can hear it over the sound of the the rushing train. Uh, He didn't do a finesse, so, you know, he's, uh, he's having some trouble. So I imagine that the two of you are going to jump down and get into the conductor area. Yes. Yes, sir. Good call, because otherwise we'd stop playing. Because <laughs> I'd be bored. So oh, good job. All right. So the two of you jump in, and you see there is a there's a there's a, well you know they they they're like the Chinese ghosts. So you can't see, really see their feet. Um, you see the pair of them, and then they're they're wailing at the conductor, and he's he's standing there. Uh, trying to hold on and keep the train moving because you guys are under imperial orders. You can't stop. You're delivering some munitions to Winter. Uh, oh, poop. What is it called? Winter Haven? Winter Cliff. Because I think Winter Haven's from another game. Winter Cliff. You're going to Winter Cliff. And you're delivering munitions under imperial orders. So he does not want to stop, but he is totally freaked out by these pair of ghosts. And they look like a male and a female. So we've got some. Uh, we, you guys. You're leading the bulls against a ghost, aren't you, Seth? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so when you lead the bulls against a ghost, the GM asks you questions. Have you completed your apprenticeship? I don't think so. Oh, well then I guess you haven't completed your journeymanship. Nope. And you're not a master line bull. Absolutely not. Do you have the support of another gang? Uh, Would that be... What does it mean, another gang? Is it? Uh, well, your line bulls is one gang, and there's only one gang on this. So. Oh right. So no, that'll be no too. Yeah, man, you're a host. Okay, yes. did you hold an anchor lottery? And and you're an anchor, so you do not take a minus one. And do you Ooh. have a bull in every other role? 
Uh, I'm going to say that you do because they're going to show up, your owl and your uh, and your rook. Uh, now, we only have one player character, so I'm going to let Kess answer this one. It applies for the whole team. It's totally up to you. No pressure. <laughs> uh, do the other bulls swear to follow your orders without hesitation? Do you see how bad Ash is? Totally. <laughs> All right. <laughs> What stinks, though, is that's not a plus. It's just kind of assumed, so it's a zero again. And then, have you worked this line before? No. Then you take a minus one. So guess what? It's not great. Or it's minus I'm, one. Yeah, I'm doing all the pluses and minus. It looks like you're at a minus one. So roll 2d6 minus one uh, to go oh. against the... No, okay, so you roll and you choose options. Okay, yeah, there we go. So now you're going to roll that 2d6 minus one. That'll be a six again. Ooh. Man. Ooh. Okay, so you do not seize the initiative or maintain an orderly disposition. The bulls are not deployed where you want them. You don't seize a particular opportunity or advantage to take a plus one ongoing. So you're caught a little flat-footed, and for you, that's like half flat-footed, because, you know. Yes. <laughs> Only half foot. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's let's take a look. What what kind of weapons do we have here? Uh, Kess, what what are you carrying? I have um, lightning web and spirit bottles, which I'm I'm taking to me, and they're kind of like the Ghostbusters ghost catcher. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ghostbusters is definitely an inspiration for this game. Okay, cool. And then Sethla, what are you carrying? Oh no! Did I have to pick that? I didn't pick it. I it's have my gun. Your, it's in your anchor description. Heavy encounter suit. That's one armor. Electrofield. It's the nice. electrofield thing in the gun. Sure. I have no idea what it is. It okay. Perfect. Then I'm carrying that one. That right, sounds great. Plus, it looks awesome, and uh, you know the picture tells a thousand words, which will make true. <laughs> okay. All right. So now you two kind of come into your first encounter, and uh, you don't really get an advantage, and you see that these things. They're drawing some kind of essence from the conductor, and one of them, the female, who, by the way, is wearing like a little bit of a veil kind of thing over her face, uh, and the other guy, he looks like he's in like one of those cool little tuxedo type deals. And the girl, she takes notices of you two, and she turns, and you see that her face is kind of ghastly and drawn, and uh, and she looks, uh, well, she looks like a ghost, so that's pretty pretty nasty. All right. Uh, so now she's going to start drawing on your essence, and since you guys don't uh, you don't have any advantage, uh, we're going to ahead and just trade some harm here. So uh, I think that because you're the bull and you're the anchor right out in front, Sethla, uh, you get to take two harm. However, you've got your one armor electro field, and that encounter suit's going to save you one of the harms. So you're just going to take one harm. Uh, so that's going to put you at three o'clock on the on the, the meter there. Three o'clock, I already did take one, right? Oh, well, I guess that moves you to six then, you're right. Yeah. You took you took the one harm from the boot. running barefoot Missing on the boot. Yeah. frozen top of the train. Okay. So, uh, now, you, there's like this lock, and the electric field is helping to break it, but you can feel... Uh, like the hair on the back of your neck stands up, and you can feel a little bit weaker, and uh, it's like your muscles are twitching just a little bit in your left hand. And uh, and and the other, the conductor, you can see that he's holding on to the little throttly thing in the in the thing to keep the. I don't know why they designed this steam engine where you got to push it forward to make it go faster a lot, but he's holding it forward. And uh, he sees he sees looks really drawn. His his hair's graying. Okay, so the two of you get to go now. What do you do? I am going to shoot that lady. Because I am pissed off. <laughs> Good call. Okay, I think that you... Oh, God, I totally should have done a steal, but I didn't. All right, so we'll remember that for next time. All right, so you're employing force here. Yes, I right, am. You, you employ force, you roll plus force, and choose some options. Good luck. That's an eight. Woo! As long as it isn't a six, those, those sixes are crazy. Yes. All right. Okay, I get to choose one. You choose one, that's right. Um, oh, I really don't want to take much more harm, but 
I think I, at this point, I, I want to drive them back so that they stop, you know, hurting all of us for now. Oh, man. Okay. So, yes, you drive them back. And you're also, you're doing some damage with your crazy lightning gun there. Uh, so, and, and which one were you, you trying to drive back in particular of the two? Well, the woman, because she was attacking us. Okay. All right. Okay, so yeah, you start driving her back with your with your lightning gun, and then she's of course going to to come back at you. But hey, let's see what's going on with Kess first, because she's over there and she's doing stuff too. What are you doing with your web? Um, so Kess is kind of I, I think she kind of um, nimbly dances around the uh, the combat between uh, Claremont and the woman, and she's going to focus her attentions on saving the conductor. Um, so she's going to uh, throw out one of those spirit bottles and then uh, target the ghost with the uh, lightning web. All right, that's pretty clever and good call. And here's my question. Are you trying to do this with force to harm, or are you going to try to look kind of amazing and impressive and do it with finesse? I think we better do it with harm, because the conductor's probably important. Nice call. Plus, if he's dead, he can't remember how amazing you looked. Okay, roll force. (laughs) That's an eight. That's an eight. Fantastic. What what option do you choose? Um, I'm going to inflict great harm. Ooh, you are brave. Okay, so you come in with your lightning web and you throw it over the the uh, the male ghost and you start trying to pull him away and and it's electrified so it's burning against its flesh and these things are made of electroplasm and the and the uh, the electricity that you use is powered by leviathan oil. Um, and that's very important because it uses up charges. So uh, your lightning gun, Cephala, it uses up one charge, um, and then your web is going to use up one charge. But uh, it's you've you've effectively captured the first uh, ghost and, and protected the conductor. You've still got to get in a spirit bottle, but mm-hmm. good job on taking the one down. Now, Cephala, uh, you're trying to create an opportunity. That was that was your choice, right? Uh, push them back, I think. Yes, I just wanted to, you know, give give everyone a little breather. Yeah, drive them back. Good call. Okay, so yes, you're you're going to be able to drive it back, but in the doing so, uh, with the weapon, uh, she looks upon you, and I'm going to need you to steel yourself against uh, duress and supernatural horrors here. So you look at the list. This is different. This is different. I think it's pretty cool. You look at the list below, and you choose which one you don't want to do, and then you you roll plus steel. And the options are freeze up, leave myself wide open. I don't want to do that. I don't want to panic, disengage, or flee. I don't want to collapse, let go, or give up. I don't want to rage, lose control, do unintended harm, or I don't want to suffer more trauma or harm. Those are the things you choose. Which one that is, then you roll the dice. And well, we see... I, yeah, yeah that I don't dice. want to panic, disengage, or flee, because that's not in my nature. Nice. You're bold. I am. That's a nine. Fantastic. So on a seven to nine, you do not you do one that you didn't pick, and I choose. So you do not uh, panic, disengage, or flee, and and you're awfully hurt. So it'd be kind of mean of me in the first encounter to choose more harm, right? Because I already froze your foot. That was that was harsh. Hmm. So I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to say. Oh, you 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 rage and you lose a little bit of control. So your your lightning gun, you fire it up, and you're you're trying to scare this lady off, and it just end up electrocuting a couple of lights, and it's like one of those like whoa, it's a fire hose kind of thing. You you blast a little bit of the ceiling. I, I'm just totally biting off of Ghostbusters. Remember the part when they're like you know, they're in the one hotel and they're like whoa I just destroyed half of the ballroom I'm so sorry but here's your bill so something like that oh. Oh, so the lightning gun does that. drive her off and she moves back and uh, actually disappears out of the, the engine area um, and she it looks like she went up top uh, so you've got the you've got the male ghost down here and captured in the web and the, and the female ghost she went up and uh, now you, you've kind of electrified a couple of the instruments and stuff. But, hey, the conductor's alive. Good job on that one, Cass. So, you, you know, you're probably not totally screwed. What do you do? Um, I'm, I'm going to work at getting the uh, male ghost into the bottle because that's the safest place for him right now. Very cool. Okay. 
I think that is, I think that's a finesse roll. What do you think? Yeah, does that sound I right? will take it. I will take it. Okay, you employ finesse, and you're going to try to do it, uh, to to do it quickly and avoid trouble or impress. Oh no! Oh! Oh goodness! Oh god! Yeah. They should not have teamed up the newbies together. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know who because they were Imperial orders. Why did they send such a crappy team? I don't even know. They must have been bottom of the barrel. Or... This is a rush job. If the guy, the guy back at the office, he's totally gonna get sacked, which is pretty for <laughs> fired. Okay, so there's a transition point where you you have to loosen the web and adjust the spirit bottle to where you can kind of pour it in, and that's why you have a whole team. Really, really, you know, you should. No offense, but you should have waited for the other two team members who were running on the tops of the trains trying to get up to you to help out. One could use his hook. That was kind of his job as the rook, and, they, and then there's a whole transition thing. You remember that from the manual now, but hey, hindsight's twenty twenty. Okay, so so yeah, you, you go for the transition from the web, and then you've got the spirit bottle open, but then it kind of slips in your fingers because you're wearing big honky gloves, right? And then and the spirit bottle starts to slip out of your fingers, but the web, you've already started the transition, and the sucker just like... <laughs> And, and then he goes, Wah! and he starts attacking you because you totally webbed him and he's pissed off. So I need you to steal yourself against, against injury here because he's going to try to uh, possess you. Good luck. Oh, no. Let's so, see. Yeah, yeah so choose what you what don't I want don't to happen. Want. So I think I don't want to... Oh gosh, this is tough. I don't want to collapse, let go, or give up. Okay, so if you succeed at that, then he doesn't take you over. That's that's great. Good luck. Thanks. Roll it in, roll it in. Um, oh, no. Oh, no. That's a six. Oh, man. Holy cats. Okay. The dice so, really hate us. <laughs> yeah. So this, this this guy, this ghost, he like jumps into your body. And um Sethla, you totally saw that. You you totally saw that. So now you're you're fighting for control of your body, but he's trying to possess you. That's 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 not that's gonna hurt. We don't even have rules for that. We're totally off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. So you saw that, Sethla. You've got the, the female. She's, she's scarred, which is British for runaway. And uh, the other one is, is possessing. Like, you can see him. He's like, hey, imagine if, uh, if, like, a ghostly figure is trying to climb into another person's body. You can see his elbow. And it kind of appears and disappears. And he's trying to merge himself in and take over poor little Kess. Uh, so, so what do the two of you do? Uh... Can I try and capture the ghost into the bottle now? Because he's sort of engaged in other things, he would probably not notice me. Ooh, that's pretty. That's pretty chancy. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a chance to do that. I'm gonna say that situationally, because he's kind of half in, half out, as it were. Uh, I'll give you a minus one because it's not gonna be easy. Uh, and, and also, just so you know, in the background, you know, over the din of the, the steam engine, the conductor's still there, and he, he's keeping the job going, but you hear the clomp, clomp, clomp of your two uh, partners in crime, and, and, uh, and they're, they're on oh, crime, you like Saul crime, you guys are good guys, so anyway, they're, they're coming their way, they're coming to help you out, uh, but yeah, if you want to try to pull this off, and a minus one for finesse, good luck. <gasps> finesse? Oh no, that's a zero, so, oh, well, I, I have to do something. Oh, <laughs> I can't believe this. Seriously, you guys. I, I don't think you were trained as the anchor. I think you got kind of thrust into that position. <laughs> oh. I yeah. Well, I think it was more that uh, it's more that they don't. You really don't want to do that. Did you notice that the anchor gets more money? That's because your job really is hard. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna get paid for this job. Okay, so you've got this. You've got the spirit bottle, and you're kind of holding it up and, and trying to get this ghost like 
here, boy, here, boy. And you're just trying to get it to go inside, and you're, you're worried about Kess. There's a whole lot going on. And hold on a second. We're, we're going to have an appearance because your two, your two Lime Bowl buddies, uh, Cantor Haig and Timoth Brogan, uh, they're going to they're gonna show up. So hold on a second here. All right, here we go. Hold on. Hold on a second. Give me, give me a take two. Okay, so here, here comes Brogan. <laughs> oh, my God! Oh, it's the best thing ever! What in the seven gods are you doing with that spirit bottle? He jumps in, and uh, and, and, and he's he's really good at this stuff, so he kind of he, he jumps across, and he comes over, he grabs the spirit bottle, and he, he plugs it in, and, uh, and you see that the, the, the body gets pulled inside, and he looks at you and he goes, You are the worst anchor I have ever seen. Oh, thank you. That's my first job. I'm trying my best. Yeah, well, your best isn't good enough. So you need to, you need to, I don't know, maybe we need to have another anchor. I swore to, to follow you, but seriously? You oh, think come that's how on, a where works? were you? Where were you? It took you forever to get here. I was at the back of the train. Right. And all the action was on the front of the train. And now you're accusing me. At least I was here. You okay, were here. We have, I know. We have better things to do. The other ghost is still loose. She's uh, somewhere on the top, uh, the roof of the train. we got to get her. Oh, I know. I, I, I already captured that one. i got to say, this was not the best mission. But hey, you need to back off on that, on that young girl. So just take it easy. Thank you. Oh, 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 okay. All right. So you you you've got the the two in the spirit bottle. According to Haig over there, um, uh, Cantor said that he was able to capture the the female, and then uh, Brogan came in and, and helped out. So yeah, two two of you are able to to pull out of this. And uh, wow, oh, it was kind of a travesty, but. Uh, you survived. Whew. <laughs> Barely. Okay. All right. So uh, within a couple hours, you guys uh, make it through the pass, and then you you start coming out of the mountain range and down towards uh, Winter Cliff. So Winter Cliff is uh, is is like a huge city, and there's a dock that's far far below. Uh, but it's an icy dock, so a lot of times they have the, the big leviathan hunting ships, and they're always cracking the ice with these huge wedges. And uh, now you're in the you're in the town of uh, Wintercliff, which is rather large. It's more of a town; it's more like a city. Uh, so now we're gonna we're gonna talk about downtime um, and also chits. So uh, the way that that the world works is that when you by hook or by crook or you know stumbling along, if you survive. <laughs> And the ghost didn't kill everyone. You get paid. Uh, so chits are the the way that things are paid for. Hold on a second. It's four pages, and I still get lost. I don't understand that at all. How does that work? Okay. So when you work a line, you get paid in chits, which are stamped lead slugs that you can redeem for food or housing and sundries from the Imperial Rail Office. So you just worked uh, a level three. So don't feel so bad. This was pretty hardcore. Uh, level three in Sapla, because you were the anchor, you get an extra bonus on top. So I hope that makes you feel better. You get eight chits. Good job. Because oh. you took out two ghosts. And Kess, even though you did most of the work, you only get five. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the way it works when you're a foreman. Or so I hear when I watch TV. Okay. So you get five chits, and uh, and Sethla gets eight chits. And there are a few things that you can do during downtime while you're here in Wintercliff. So have you, have, if you said it's the first time you've worked the line, but have you been to Wintercliff before? Um, let's say that yes, we have been here. Oh, great. Okay. All right. So both of you have been here before. Awesome. Hey, hey, did you two know each other before you uh, you became line bulls? Did we? I think we took our apprenticeship together. Yeah, makes sense. Oh, nice. Okay, so great. The two of you are at least allies, if not friends. That's, that's cool. Now, uh, <clears throat> you know, Timoth Brogan, 
he he's I don't know was how's he related to you guys? Because yeah, he's considered the unlucky one. Did he oh, train up with you, or is just just assigned on this job? I think I think he was assigned um, because he he must have screwed up somewhere, so he has to babysit us. Yeah. Oh. And and Cantor Cantor Haig, he's actually like a level one owl. He's been around the block, uh, so I think that he ticked somebody off, and that's how he ended up on this team. But uh, but but he's nice enough, you know. He's trying to make sure you guys don't die. But Timoth doesn't like you guys at all. So you guys get paid at the Imperial Rail Office, and he heads off. He's he's going to go to the brothels. <sighs> That's what you do when you're a nasty person, according to fiction, right? So you go to, yeah. I don't know. Right? They do that on that Deadwood show. Okay. All right. Cantor Haig, though, uh, you know, he's going to go and catch a play because he likes the theater. Hmm. That's how you know he's a good guy. Uh, but what, what do the two of you do? You've got some options during downtime. So when you have downtime off of work, uh, you can hit the pub which allows you to heal trauma. Uh, you can visit the Physiker, which is like a doctor. Uh, or you can work a side job. And you visit the Physiker, that heals physical harm. Hit the pub, that, that heals your freak out, because you get drunk and you forget about it. Bury your, your, your sadness. And then you can work a side job if you're doing okay and you just want to make some extra money. Or you can get favors which gets you little rumors and neat little bits. It's, it's a pretty neat little system. So uh, what would you like to do, Sethla? I think I should heal my physical harm since I'm already, I have two, and, you know, I don't want to die in the next one we do, so I'm going to go heal myself. Okay, great. So you got up to the, he the you were at 6 o'clock, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, it says here that um, you know you have downtime. You can choose one of those, and if you're six or below, you heal all. So uh, Doctor Lom uh, gives you. Uh, let's see here. He, there's some cool bits here on the. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, come on, PDF. Ah. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, he gives you a vial of reddish fluid. Uh, yeah. Well. Hmm. That only heals one, but you're getting healed all. Okay, so he just he he is uh, Doctor Alam is actually good with all chemical methods. So he's got uh, the source, and he brews up some really cool uh, uh, potions that you can take, and that'll heal up your wounds in one night. Okay, cool. Yeah, and you're a lime bull, so you get a you get a special discount from Doctor Alam. Uh, so what about you? What about you, Kess? What are you up to on your downtime? I'm gonna go find a uh, alcoholic potion. Oh. That was pretty traumatizing. <laughs> <laughs> you can heal uh, that trauma. Yeah, if it's uh, six or below, then you heal all your traumas. So you're you're perfectly sane. So what's your? Uh, hold on a second. I I've, I used a pretty cool website. So uh, are you in the are you in the document? Because I want to know which pub you go to. Um, I have the document. I can I can drop it into the chat. I'm sorry. I just I'm I'm in love with this random pub generator. Some of these pub names are so much better than most randomly generated names of things. Do, do, do. Oh, just drop it into chat. Do, do, do. There are probably too many of those. My top, my top three are probably the Whispering Wolverine Arms. Uh, I also like the Horrible Furrier Arms. <laughs> the, sensors. the Modest Layer Inn, Cowardly Night Tavern. Okay, I, I didn't do a top three. Oh okay, God. I love them all. Oh, I think I think we totally have to we totally have to visit the cat. The Cat Tavern. Okay. Cats. Well, they're better than rats, and they do kill rats, and I hate rats. Okay. All right. So the side job results get you rumors and leads, but the two of you are just trying to heal up. So that's okay. Uh, so you go out to the Cat Tavern. How uh, how does that go for you, uh, Kes? Um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to get wasted out of my mind. Probably, probably go home with a random hookup. You know, just... <laughs> Get it out of my system. That's that's pretty great. Okay, well it it goes well for you because I've seen your picture, so I imagine a random hookup's not too hard. 
Nice. Okay, so, uh, so a couple days will pass here in Wintercliff before uh, the rail moves on. Uh, so I assume you guys are going to take the next job. Otherwise, we'll just stop here because i got nothing else. Of course we take it. But before we go, can we, uh, since I used one of those charges on my gun, can I buy more charges in it? You sure can. Um, and that is going to cost you... Hold on. Let me just check to check, make sure I'm... Doing oh, and how much did it actually cost to heal myself? Oh, uh, you get one free of charge. Uh, oh, okay. That's just one thing you get to do when you come in town. Okay. And if you want to heal like more, you spend a chip per extra. Okay. Uh, okay. So one use of your item powers it up, and I'm going to say it's a one chip per to to get filled up. So you use okay. one attack. I think you used it once. Yes. Okay. So it'll cost you one of those eight chit that you just made. And okay. uh, no. The way that the, the game kind of works is that um, uh, you can spend chits during downtime to recover harm and trauma on workside jobs, and then you get a stash, which is the loot that you've hidden away for your retirement. So right now, the two of you are in the stash, like, 1 to 10. So if you retired right now, you'd get to be a desperate beggar and die on the street cold forgotten. <laughs> that would be pretty right. awesome. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to end the game there, that's, that's kind of lame. I assume you went to more work. Yes, please. Absolutely. Good call. Okay, so now you guys are going to be heading from Wintercliff uh, up to Duskwall. Now, Duskwall is kind of like the major city um, here in Akros, which is where Nobility is. I don't know if you noticed, but nobody chose Akros, but they get they get bonuses to, to like imposing their will because they're all noble, which I think noble is, in this game is code for rich and mean. Yeah. That seems like a fair assumption. Yeah, it's kind of a trope. Okay. Uh, all right, so the next... Yeah, the next one, this is a, a little confused when it comes to the way the lines are worked because you're going towards Duskwall. You came from the past, so I'm just going to cut the pie in there between Duskwall, which is a level one, and the past, which is a level three. We're going to say this is a level two line. Fair? Okay. Yeah, hopefully we will do better this time. Okay, so now now i got to know, as you guys are kind of forming up your get inside, and you don't have to walk the train until it's up and moving in certain areas. So I, I'm going to say that you're in with the, the your other two team, team members. Uh, it's the same team of, of bulls. And uh, so how, how is this going to... you going to say anything, Seth? Are you, gonna, you planning on just planning on being the anchor again? Well, since I am the anchor, I don't think I have a choice. Uh, it's true. It's true. Okay. <laughs> All right, oh, I am. I am just, you know, staring him down, or at least trying to. Are right, you going to stare down Brogan? Because you guys have been gone for two days. When Brogan comes back, he smells of ale uh, still. But he's, he's still a little bit wasted. So I'm giving him the, you know, the eye... Ooh. Okay. All right. So hold on. Hold on. Hold on a second. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> He's gonna totally say something nasty. Why are you giving me the eye? I only have the one, but I can see it. Yeah, you better. Huh. Well, listen. After the stunt that you pulled heading to Wintercliff, I'm not sure I want you to go to Disc Duskwall as the anchor. You don't have any choice. Hmm. I think you should impose your will on me to make me actually buy into it. Otherwise, I'm going to grouse, and you're not going to get your benefit when you face a ghost, which is probably going to happen because this game is called Ghost Lines. Hmm. Well, I still have other team members. You're not the only one. That's true, but if I don't follow your orders, then you're probably going to be messed up. So you're going to impose your will on me? Okay. Oh, that's an eight, and I don't think I get to add anything on that, do I? Yeah, if your steel is greater, dun, 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 you take one. What does it mean if your steel is greater? I don't know either. Is it, I is think it greater he... than um, than? 
Hence? Okay. A steel is a one. If your steel is better than a one... Nope, it's one. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, I'm sorry. Looking at the wrong sheet. His steel is a zero. So you have a one, so you get a plus one. Ooh. Are you threatening bodily harm? I don't think so, right? Sorry? Are you uh, threatening bodily harm? Are you going to hurt him? Uh, no, I'm not going to hurt him if he's just going to, you know, behave at least as much as he can. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you just got the one plus one. So your total is nine? Yes. Yes. All right. So on a seven to nine, he has to choose what to do what you say, or you freaked him out. He steps back and he says, Well... If you blow it this time, I'm taking your anchor share of chits. You hear me? Like I have any choice. I do hear you. All right, then. <laughs> Bad bunny. Okay. Wow, boy, that guy's kind of a... He's kind of a dink. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, so next you guys are going to go on the next line. You're headed north, and you're going um, from Wintercliff. Uh, you're skirting up along the coast, so it's actually a very beautiful vista. And uh, you're heading to slightly warmer climes because you're out of the mountains where it's super cold. There's a very high alt altitude. And uh, as you're, you're cruising along, uh, and you're kind of walking along the top. And, and, of course, there's a lot of electricity that's built up by the electro rails, and that's what forces off a lot of the ghosts. Otherwise, you'd be dealing with this stuff all the time. Uh, <clears throat> so, Kess, um, who are you walking with when you hear um, your name being called by the wind? You know, <clears throat> I, I think Sethla and I are going to stick together. Mm -hmm. Nice call. Okay, so now you tell me, Kess, does Sethla hear it too? No. Oh, man, this is kind of spooky. So you hear several voices calling out your name, and they don't call your badge name. They call you, They call your name, Cass. 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 You can almost mistake it for the sound of the trumbling and the bumbling of the, of the train and the whistle that occasionally comes up because they let off some of the steam. But it's been maybe ten minutes, and... You're rather sure that that's your name they're calling. Do you hear something? You look you like you're listening to... I don't, except for the usual noises. I, I can hear my name. You don't hear that? No. I, I don't. It might be a ghost just, you know, playing a trick on your mind. Well, if it's a ghost, we should probably find it, because I've been hearing it for a while. Oh, right. I think this time we should get our beloved party members with us. Don't you think we should maybe have something other than, hey, there might be a ghost to tell them? Uh, maybe, but if we go with just the two of us, I just, uh, I, I, I don't want to have broken having that little talk with me again. Well, tr try not to make me sound crazy. Please. Uh, let's just say that we both heard it. Okay. They, they, don't have to, they don't have to know that, you know, I didn't hear it. So let's just go and say that we both heard it. Okay. okay. So the two of you are, are reaching out to the other two team members? Yes. All right, so Cantor Hag, what do you, you're hearing your own voice? You're hearing your name? Uh, we both heard them, um, well, actually not my name, her name. Hmm. I have a, I have a question. Uh, we're on our way. Uh, I have a question for you, Kes. Do you, do you know any people that were not, uh, uh, ended appropriately? After death? I 
can't think of any. I'm from Aruvia. We don't get fancy there. Mm. We don't have the money to do that kind of thing there. I see. So there is a possibility that these ghosts could know you. Uh, or something. They know my name anyway. Hmm. Trust but me. But that, that doesn't mean anything, right? Well, it might. Yes. I would, I would take his word on it. It most certainly does. You should steal yourself. It is possible that you may meet those who have gone to the afterlife, the unquiet dead, who knew you in life. Um, yeah, no. <gasps> oh, I forgot to pick something. Well, it doesn't really matter because, you know... <laughs> Whatever you were <laughs> failed anyway. Uh, How do they, you know, the dice room hate us so much today? <laughs> they always hate me. I don't, I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Tell me a little story, uh, Kess. Who have you most recently lost that meant something to you? Um, I think the person she most recently lost is um, her younger sister. Oh my goodness. That's, that's, you're punching me right in the feels. <laughs> Good. Uh, I'm going to make you suffer with us. Which one did you did you not want to happen? You didn't say at a time, but, but that's cool. It's a new system. Um, I would not have wanted to um, probably uh, panic disengage or flee because she's trying to be brave and badass like Sethla. She's been she's been relatively awesome. So yeah. Yes. All right, so hold on. I'm gonna go through the name chart because we gotta name your your sister. Ooh, how does um? Oh, those are so many good names. Lizette, how's that sound? I like it. Awesome. So, ah, the four of you gathered together. Brogan's being relatively quiet. Maybe uh, maybe Haig had a word with him. Who knows? Uh, the the four of you are are talking about this voice. And uh, Kess, you've you've gotten them near where you heard it the strongest, and that's when um, the the uh, the disemb yeah, it's possible that he has a hangover, and that's why he's not really grousing. Maybe he's thrown up in his little helmet. Who knows? Oh, <laughs> just a, just a little bit, you know, full sick, and he's yeah. got to clean it out. But you can't tell because it's a mask. Okay, so Kess. Uh, that's that's when you see. Um, oh wow! I'm gonna go with the first image I thought of. Sorry, it's super gross, but like the disembodied head of your sister Lizette starts floating up from it. It was caught in the rail, the electricity, the rail. She must have been following you from like it, the, your homeland, right? Because she didn't die around here. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So she's been following you, and you see her in the same way. Uh, that she looked the moments after the headsman took her. Uh, and yeah, she, she she has those sad eyes, those same sad eyes that you that you looked at in the last moments before she was placed on a chopping block. And that's when you freak out. And uh, I, I imagine you want to get away from that, right? To oh, yes. Like choose the oh, yes. Cool. So, yeah, Sethla and the other two. And of course, you know, hold on a second. Oh man, great! So anyway, you see, you see, Cass, she like takes off, and it's not the most graceful run because you have magnetic boots. So she, but she's clomping away, and that ghost head is chasing after her, and uh, and yeah. So you guys have got to take care of that. So we're gonna lead, you're gonna lead the bulls against a, ghoul, a ghost, right? Yes. All right. After you finish this line, you've completed your apprenticeship, but you haven't yet. Of course, you haven't done your journeymanship. You're not a master lion bull. You do not have the support of another gang. You held an anchor lottery, and you won that. So there is an anchor, so you don't take a minus. You have every roll covered. The other bulls have kind of sort of swore to follow your orders without hesitation. 
Uh, so I'm going to, yeah, well, I mean, you, you bullied him into it, so it's good. And uh, have you worked this line before? No. So it's a flat roll. All right. Yeah. Here right. goes. Eight. Finally. Fantastic. Okay. So you roll and you choose options. Um, on seven to nine, you get one. So do you want to seize the initiative, maintain an orderly disposition, or seize a particular opportunity or advantage? Now, I will tell you, if you want to maintain an orderly disposition, um, I will let you calm Kess down. Uh, but if you want to choose one of the others, like the advantage, then, of course, you get an advantage and a plus one ongoing. I want to calm her down because otherwise it would suck. She would just keep on running. So, yeah, that's, that's what I want to do. Okay. All right, so what is it that you call out, or you can, well, you've, we've established wireless communication uh, on a point-to-point, -point, very short basis, like a mm. shortwave ham radio. I'm sure that someone really smart will think of how that technology works. I'm just going to say people talk, other people listen, short range, so that we can keep you close and see people on the same shot, like all TV side. Okay, what do you say uh, to Kess? Um, I will just yell, don't leave. we got to take her down. we got to uh, end end it properly so that, you know, she is finally going to be able to rest in peace. So don't run away. Oh, wow. That was that was a great little speech. And it works for you, Kess. Like, how does it make you feel? Um, <clears throat> I actually think it makes me feel um, comforted. Um, obviously, like, she's terrified there's a ghost coming at her, but um, comforted on behalf of her sister if she can put her to, if she can, you know, make her rest in peace. That's that's all she wants. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, so you've deployed out the group, and the first thing that Brogan does is he grabs out his uh, his lightning hook, and he's starting he, – he's heading down to the oh, – I'm going to forget words, but the thing where the big wheels are going around. He's, he's heading down to the bottom. I don't know. I want to say a trellis, but I'm probably totally wrong. But image-wise, he's climbing down the side of the – the train, and he's, he sees the body, because it was the body in the head. The body's actually caught in the electric uh, field generated by the by the rail, and he's going to try to pry that loose. And uh, and Haig is right behind you. So what do you want to do, Seth? Uh, I want to try and capture that ghost. Okay, that makes sense. It's kind of a dumb question for me to ask, but hey, i got to ask it. So I think that you're what? Are you going to try to employ some force? And well, you're going yes. after the head, right? Okay, so here yes. we go. Employ first, force. Go for it. Uh, eleven, right? Oh, yes. Wow, on a ten yes. or eleven, you, you choose two options. Um, I will suffer a little harm in return. And is it possible for me to try and capture it actually into the bottle thingy? Or if not, then I will be creating an opportunity for... Actually, I want to create an opportunity for guests to do that because she needs to do that herself. That's what I want to do. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And I was going to say I like the idea of it being more than just one role to resolve. Uh, mostly because you guys fail a lot of roles and it amuses me. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, so you you hit with the you hit with your lightning gun, and you kind of have it a little bit captured. It's like one of those proton pack type deals, I think, because it's just awesome. Okay, so it's it's somewhat held in stasis, but you need a spirit bottle to, to complete it. So you've got to trap it. And Kess, you're the closest. Uh, so you see her; she's looking at you. I'm not gonna make you make another steel roll, uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and give you one trauma because seriously, you're about to dissipate. It's not even a thing you do in your home world too much, right? But anyway. What do you, what do you want to do? Spirit, spirit bottle or... Yep, spirit bottle. Good luck. That, that's a seven on the dice. <gasps> nice. And you were employing finesse, right? So I would imagine that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So that's a nine. Wow. Cool. All right, you get to choose one option. Um, I think I would like to avoid trouble, compromise, or cost. Oh, sweet. Okay, so what are your final words to your your dead ghost 
sister, Lizette. I'm sorry, and I love you. Oh. oh for, for just a moment, right before her spirit is pulled into the bottle, uh, you're able to, to see that there's, there's a bit of understanding, that there's an iota of who she was, and it recognizes you. That's why she was pulled to you in that unending pattern, why she had followed you for hundreds of miles, and you bring it to closure. And... Uh, her, her head disappears, and the body is also dissipated with uh, with lightning charges, and uh, yeah. So you've got you've got the spirit bottle, uh, which has your your ghost sister's essence in it, and she's captured. She can't do any more harm, but uh, by the imperial rules, you're going to need to destroy it. Uh, but the, but the, hey, the danger's over for now. But you've got your ghost sister's head in a bottle. Not creepy. Uh, so Sethla, you see that uh, Cass is able to very deftly you create that opportunity, you, you hold it fast and she brings up the spirit bottle and she says a few words and you hear it over the wireless as well and uh, and then uh, the Lizette is, is gone no more and there's there's no more threat for right now what do you do? Um, I will go give her a hug because obviously she will need it No. That kind of kills your badass image, though. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. But it's kind of like a little bit awkward hug because, you know, she's not so used to that kind of thing. It's, it's kind of like stiff and like, I think you need this, and a little bit patting on her back and then quickly disengage. <laughs> oh, that's pretty great. Okay. Fantastic. All right, so you guys, uh, you guys travel along for a little bit longer, and um, you're coming up. I'm going to look at the map because I just think that's the coolest map ever. So you're coming up along the, the most northern point, uh, and then you're going to be heading west along towards Duskwall. Uh, and as you hit that point, there's a there's a, another rail, and I'm not sure if you can see it on the map, uh, but that rail, what's so cool is that this rail was a thing in the game when, when John Harper made it like way back. I think this game's like a couple years old. And in Blades in the Dark... Uh, I'm pretty sure that that rail goes to another land, which is kind of cool. Okay, uh, so here's what happens. Um, all right, so you see as you're coming up, and hopefully you guys are looking into the, the document. But I'll just tell you that there's a junction, right? There's a point where two railroad lines are coming together, and, uh, and of course the railways are smart enough to where normally there's not two trains coming at the same time. However... As the two of you are traveling along uh, with the rest of your team and, and this train's headed that way, you see that there is another line that's headed up from the northernmost and it's going to cross in. Now, normally that would be no problem. However, you see that that thing is traveling incredibly fast um, and that that's the problem because it looks like the two of you may crash into each other, uh, no. which means that you failed at your job. Because, you know, trail, the train crashes, the electric rail goes down, and then you're overwhelmed by ghosts, and everyone here dies. Which, as to the ghost horde, is kind of a, like an Amway scheme, type deal, pyramid scheme. <laughs> At least we would go out with the bang. But let's not make that happen. Yeah, it would be, it'd be like a really short game. <laughs> you guys all die. So, yeah, there's a weird supernatural happening where somehow... Uh, the northern train is going faster than is humanly possible. And it's mostly humans here. I don't think there are any, like, non-humans in this world. So humanly possible. Uh, what do you do? Uh, I don't think we can just jump on that one. Or can we? To try and see what's going on. Hmm. No, okay. I, I, maybe I'm not describing it too well. You guys are coming up along... Hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll screen share, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay. Okay. Go. Okay, come on with the buttons. And, uh, okay. Uh, da, da. And it also could be just me not understanding. You know, there's no, not no, necessarily no, no, anything wrong right. with your explaining. I don't think I was doing the best job. Okay, so uh, are cool. you able to see my pointer? Yep, yes. Okay, great. So you guys are coming along the north here, and you hit that northernmost point of the rails, right? And then you were going to head west towards Duskwall. And this is kind of the easier part. Duskwall is a pretty large city. It's normally a level one. You've got another rail line that's coming from... It's coming south. 
right on this northernmost, and then there's a junction, and this is where they trade with Duskwall, these guys way up in the north. Uh, and so what you see is you see a rail line. It's about a mile out, and you guys are um, about a mile out, but it's moving an incredible speed, and it looks like you guys may not both come to a head, but at some point it's going to just slam into your rail if it doesn't slow down or if you guys don't stop or speed up. That's what I'm saying. Does that make more sense? Yes. Okay. Ish, I think. Ish. So, okay, one train leaves from Chicago going 60 miles an hour. Another... You guys ever take that in class? You ever have that? Yes, yes, but we're not we're not licensed doctors. We're not good at the math. <laughs> well, I didn't go to Johns Hopkins for nothing. Okay. Um. So. Okay. Did so, I get it? So I, I tell you that to tell you. Either we need to um go slower or a lot faster to get. Yes. Not. Mm-hmm. So and what I'm, you need to do is you either need to um. Figure out what the supernatural thing is happening to the northern train, or you need to tell the conductor to stop your train, and hopefully he'll do it in time to where you don't crash. Or both? Or both. If you want to multitask and you're smart, go for it. How do we figure out what's going on in the other train? Well, you've got an owl. And uh, he's, he's he's more experienced than you. He may be able to see some things to give you some insight. Oh, cool. Well, let's ask him. Uh, he was Hague, Hague, right? Mm-hmm. That was an owl. Right, yes, he's an owl. <clears throat> oh, that looks pretty scary over there. It does. Can, can, can you figure out what's going on in there? Mm, okay, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Now, I need... Uh, I need some help here because I, I don't roll dice. Okay. I will roll dice for you because dice love me. That's an 8 plus whatever you get. Oh no, did Hag break? Yeah, I think... Oh no! Dr. Dom just froze up. <gasps> Technical difficulties. Yes. Uh, hi, everybody. This is Dr. Tom the Frog, and I, I just wanted to let you know we had some technical difficulties when I was running Ghost Line, so we'll never know if if the uh, if the two trains crash. And I'm sorry about that, but I had a wonderful time, and I wanted to take an extra opportunity to say thank you to Andrea and Yona for putting up with me in my first live hangout on air game. I, I had a great time, and I hope to do it again. So thanks for watching, and uh, and and sorry that it was such an abrupt end. But but you can think of it like a French movie. You can imagine what the ending was like. Credits rolled, and there was no resolution. There you go. <laughs>